Welcome to the Rocky Mountain Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com slash R-M-A-C-A-C. And now I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter from Regent University. Take it away. Well, good evening, everyone. Let me just go ahead and share my screen really quickly. All right, awesome. Well, my name is Caitlin Irvin from Regent University, and I am very excited to talk with you a little bit about what your future could look like at Regent. All right, so we are a private Christian university located in coastal Virginia Beach, Virginia. Um, and as you can see from this slide on campus, you'll be surrounded by some really beautiful Georgian style architecture. Um, our campus is covered with brick walkways and a really beautiful wooded landscape. Um, and we are conducting tours right now. So if you can come to visit campus, we encourage you to do so, or we have a virtual tour available on our website. Um, Regent is a liberal arts university, but we offer over 135 different programs for you to choose from. We offer every level of education, all the way from associate's degrees up to PhDs and doctoral programs. Um, and some of our most popular programs for undergrad students include cybersecurity, psychology, business, communication, education, and biblical studies. We have over 11,000 students total, 4,400 of those are undergraduate students. Um, and we have a combination, some of our students study on campus and commute from the local area and some study online as well. Um, we ha have students that come from all over the country. Uh, they represent 90 different countries as well and 40 different denominations. Um, and you can, as I mentioned before, you can choose to study online, live on campus or commute. Um, however you choose to study, rest assured that you will not get lost in a giant lecture hall or be treated like a number. Um, you will learn directly from your professors in a small classroom environment, allowing you to connect with your peers and also receive more personalized instruction from your professors. Um, and in addition to that, our faculty are not only teach, but they actively work in their disciplines. Um, over 90% of our faculty have earned the highest degree possible in their fields, so they are a fantastic resource for you as you're preparing for next steps. All right, so why Regent? Well, here at Regent, we want to surround you with every resource you need um, in order to earn a quality education and also have a great experience. So all of our services from our academic support center to our center for student happiness are available to you, whether you're studying on campus or online. Um, we just want you to know that we are committed to your success and we want to help you every single step of the way. We offer apartment style um, student housing here on campus, and that includes free parking and laundry and a free 24 hour fitness center um, our apartment style dorms come with a fully furnished kitchen in each suite. And we are ranked in the top five for safest college campuses in Virginia. So I know a lot of parents might be interested in that. Um, and we realized that figuring out the finances is a huge factor in choosing which school you're going to go to. Um, so at Regent, we are committed to making our education as affordable as possible, um, including with many different scholarships. Uh, we do rank in the top 5% of most affordable private Christian colleges and universities. Um, and in fact, 85% of our undergrad students receive some form of aid. Um, we also have a net price calculator on our website to help you determine what the cost would be for you based on your individual variables. So I encourage you to check that out as well. Um, and just know that we, again, we don't want costs to stand in the way of you being able to attend Regent. 
So we also understand that your college experience is a 360 degree experience. Um, and so we offer many opportunities outside of the classroom for you to take advantage of as well. We have over 65 different uh, student clubs and organizations on campus, including our surf club, our moot court and our student activities board. Um, we have regular events and activities that students can participate in campus wide uh, this semester. We had um, student paint nights and escape rooms that we set up on campus. Um, and our student services has done a great job of making sure that there's still a lot of things to do on campus um, that fit within the COVID guidelines. We also offer nine collegiate sports as well as many club and intramural sports. Um, we have a state of the art performing arts center where students can either watch or participate in several productions throughout the year. Um, if you're interested in the military or a military career, we offer several ROTC programs and scholarships. And last but certainly not least, our campus ministries host chapel and life groups and other ways to connect with people each week as well. So as I mentioned before, Regent is located in coastal Virginia Beach. Um, we're not far from the boardwalk and Virginia in general hosts boasts many state and national parks. Um, we're near some several historic sites like historic Williamsburg um, and our students love to take advantage of nearby art museums and cultural events and plus we are only a few hours away from other places like Washington DC and the Outer Banks as well. So I encourage you to apply. There are two ways to do so. You can either go online and fill out our region application on our website, or you can call and speak with one of our admissions counselors. We do operate on a rolling admissions basis, so you can apply at any time. Um, and if you do call in, we will waive your application fee for you as well. And I will mention that we are test optional right now due to COVID as well. So with that, um, thank you so much and have a great evening. Thank you. Next, you'll be hearing from Sweet Briar College. Hello, my name is Savannah, and I am an assistant director of enrollment at Sweet Briar College. And I am so glad that you're here. I want to share a little bit of information with you about Sweet Briar. So, Sweet Briar is a small private women's college. We are intentionally uh, small. Our average class size is about eight to 12 students. So you really get to know your faculty. We are all women and we've always been all women. We're really focused on developing leaders for the problems of the 21st century, uh, creating collaborators, problem solvers, um, and very hands-on and intensive and experiential. So lots of chances to get in there and learn by doing. Our campus is fairly large, although most of it is wooded and um, undeveloped, so it's pretty easy to get back and forth to class, but there's also 18 miles of trails that you can go hiking and biking and horseback riding on. And then we are really focused on outcomes and preparing our students for success. Within six months of graduation, 90% of our students are either gainfully employed or in graduate school. We have about 20 different programs of study, including pre-med, pre-vet, pre-law. We have an equestrian study certificate where you can focus in on the training and schooling of horses. And we have an ABET accredited engineering program. One of our graduates from 2020 is now working in the Jet Propulsion Laboratory at NASA. Eight out of 10 of our students do internships. Many of them do more than one before they graduate. And many of them have their first job offer as a result of one of these internships. Six out of 10 of our students do research with faculty. Many of them are actually published with faculty. So that's a fantastic thing to be able to put on your resume. We have incredible faculty. Most of them have the highest degree in their field and they came to Sweetbriar because they want to teach. Sweetbriar is primarily a teaching institution. They are continuing to do research and to publish, but their primary focus is on teaching. They're never gonna be taught by graduate students. We also have a unique calendar system where we begin and end the year with a three-week semester where you only take one course. Um, it meets every day for several hours. It's intensive. There are also some courses that go abroad when all of this fun is over. We had an art history class that was going to Italy before COVID, an English and creative writing class that went to London, and there will be more of those when we're able to travel again. 
We are a residential campus. We guarantee housing for all four years. Lots of different dorms and residence halls options available. They're all heated and air conditioned, which is not normal. Um, we also have on-campus health services. We believe that mental health is just as important as physical health. And so that is part of the package. And then the on-campus dining is fantastic. Our dining service provider is Meriwether Godsey and they are locally owned, women owned and operated, sustainably sourced. Um, you can actually see the greenhouse where we're growing a lot of our produce literally from the, the dining hall. We have a 25 apiary that is helping to support local wildlife and food supplies. You can actually become a beekeeper and learn how to take care of them. We have two vineyards that are growing on campus to support local wineries. And then a 26,000 square foot greenhouse um, where we've just added hydroponics and there are some days that are dedicated just to student research. We have an equestrian program. This is literally on campus. You don't have to drive. Um, to go get to it. We have about 130 acres, about a, about 50 school owned horses, so you don't have to be able to bring your own horse. A third of our students are horseback riders and half of those are first time riders. So it's a program for, for students at all levels. We have seven other varsity sports and we truly are um, a division three school. So you get to be a student athlete. All of the practices are blocked in the evening so they don't interfere with classes and rarely do games interfere with classes. So it's a, it's a fantastic experience to really excel and focus on school, but also have that team atmosphere. Lots of different co-curricular life activities um, and options. If there's something that you want that doesn't exist, you just need a few friends and a faculty sponsor to get that started. Again, study abroad is an option as um, everything calms down. We have some established partnerships, but we encourage students to go anywhere that isn't a war-torn country. I know students who've gone to Germany, Tanzania, Italy, Australia, basically anywhere. Career services follows you for life. So 20 years later down the road after graduating, you change your mind and want a completely different career, they'll work with you for free. We are affordable. So this is the overall top price tag. If you weren't receiving any financial aid, all of our students receive some type of financial aid, whether it's merit-based scholarships or need-based. 99% um, of our students are receiving that. I've seen some financial aid packages where $20,000 is left out of pocket. That family didn't receive much. They're not very needy. And then students who are more like me who have less than $5,000 left over um, because they're getting a lot of need aid as well. We can't promise to meet full need, but we work really hard to put together a package that works for your family. We are open for daily visits. We would love for you to come out. We are right in the middle of Virginia um, and Lynchburg Airport works with us. So really easy for you to fly out and see us. We have a program where we can help cover the cost of your travel. Come see us, come see everything we have to offer. We'll be having open houses again in the fall. Hopefully those will be um, in person, but we'll probably also have some virtual options again. And then apply, we're still accepting applications. If by any chance you're looking for fall 21, there's no fee to apply. Um, even if it's next year, no fee. Essays and recommendation letters are optional. If you have at least 3.0 GPA, test scores are optional. Um, if you have under that, but you couldn't take the test, we'll look at something else. Um, we look at students holistically, so there are no cut scores for us. We do free transfer credit evaluations. So if you've taken any um, dual enrollment or maybe early college classes, we'll work with you there. And um, we have a few different enrollment periods. And then this is how you get in touch with me. I will put my information in the chat as well. I work with students from the West Coast and from the Midwest. Um, so I'd love to work with you directly. Thank you. Next, you'll be hearing from DePaul University. Hi folks, my name is Gracie Caprubias and I'm an admission counselor at DePaul University. Thrilled to be able to be here to share a little bit more about DePaul and who we are. To kick us off, I wanna talk about DePaul a little generally. So we were founded in 1898, which means we've been around the block for quite some time. We've grown exponentially since our first year of operation though. We started with about 70 students and DePaul is very much a medium-sized university. So we have a total enrollment of about 22,000 students. About 15,000 of that is undergraduate, undergraduate and about 7,000 of that is graduate. So of those 15,000 graduate students, we do maintain a student to faculty ratio of 15 to one. We pride ourselves in being able to give our students the space to have engaging classroom conversations without feeling like they're ever gonna get lost in a lecture hall. And so you'll get to have a lot of conversations with your faculty members and really get to know them number one uh, or on number one or on a one-on-one -on -one basis. 
Sorry, folks. Uh, but we are the nation's largest university with a primary mission of teaching and service. So that also means that you're never going to have a class that's really going to be taught by a TA. It's so important for us to give you the space to get to know your faculty members directly so you have access to research opportunities and can really understand the industries that they are part of. Now, a fun fact about DePaul is that we actually have two campuses. So we're located smack dab in the city of Chicago. We have one campus in the Lincoln Park neighborhood on the north side of the city of Chicago. And then we have one that's downtown in the loop. So our students get the best of both worlds. We have, hustle, we have the hustle and bustle of the city and all those job and internship opportunities that come along with that. But you also still get that small school feel. So on our Lincoln Park campus, it very much has that liberal arts campus vibe. It's a pretty small campus. You can walk across the campus in about 10 minutes and to get in between campuses is actually pretty easy. All you do is hop on the train and it'll take you door to door from campus to campus. As a student at DePaul, you have an unlimited train and bus pass, which is really your golden ticket to the city of Chicago. You can use it not only to get to and from campus, but to also explore the different neighborhoods all across the city or maybe even use it on your way to an internship downtown. It's important to know that at DePaul, different campuses are actually home to different colleges. So our College of Business, our College of Communication, our College of Computing and Digital Media, and our College of Law are all housed downtown. And then that means that our College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences, our College of Science and Health, College of Ed, and our Theater and Music School are all housed on the Lincoln Park campus. So the majority of first year students spend a lot of time their freshman year in the Lincoln Park campus. And then the further you progress into your major, the more, the more time you'll spend on whichever campus your college is housed. So DePaul has hundreds of programs um, and a lot of flexibility for our students to not just pursue one major, but to perhaps combine their interests and really diversify and make themselves marketable to employers. So if you're a person that wants to double major or have a minor or two or three, they're a great place for that. I'll tell you a little bit about some crowd favor programs. We have a very strong college of business. We get to work strategically with the big four accounting firms for all my business nerds out there. It's a great way to have those hands-on learning experiences. And we work directly with those firms to help get you hired as soon as you graduate. In addition to that, students have access to the third largest media market in the country as part of our College of Communication great relationships with journalists and different sports media folks all across the city of Chicago. We also have a nationally ranked film and television program and our students get to work on the second largest production lot in the country. And we have a very competitive college of science and health that helps prepare our students for medical school where we actually have kind of a direct admit program with one of our partner universities, the Rosalind Franklin University of Medicine and Science. So there are lots of opportunities for you as a student. At our core, we are a liberal arts university, which means there's a lot of flexibility just building built into your schedule and your time at DePaul. In addition to that, we love encouraging students to leverage the city of Chicago to its fullest extent. There is never a dull moment on or off campus. There's always something, something to do in the city of Chicago. And as a student at DePaul, you get in free to so many different spaces, whether it's museums or just being able to enjoy strolls in the park or maybe heading to a Cubs or Sox game. There is a countless list of things to do. And when you're not having fun, we do encourage career development. So being in the city of Chicago, our students are at the epicenter of so many booming industries, which means the internship and job opportunities are plentiful. We have a full service career center that works with you literally as early as day one of college. You can walk in, say, hey, I need a resume, I need a cover letter, and they will connect you with all the resources that you need. In addition to that, we have so many alumni in the city of Chicago that are there to serve as your mentors and help guide you along as you're learning more about the industry that you're excited about. In addition to that, community on campus is a huge deal for us. We have over 350 different student organizations. And as a university, we place an emphasis on community service. DePaul has a big question that we ask all of our students. We constantly ask them what must be done. We want you to think critically about what you can do, what we can do, and what we can all do together to leave our communities better than when we last found them. So as a university, we're always providing our students with the opportunity to give back to the communities around them and to really ground them in this idea of taking all of our passions and interests and thinking big picture about them. Now, in terms of applying, default application process is pretty straightforward. We are Common App exclusive, so just send us that Common App. In addition to that, we require an official high school transcript as well as a letter of recommendation from your high school counselor known as the Common App School Report. Test scores are completely optional. We are a test optional school and we've been test optional for quite some time. So if you haven't been able to take the SAT or ACT because of COVID, or if you just have general test anxiety, 
do not feel stressed. You can feel free to apply test optional. You're still considered for all the same merit aid as any other student that's applying with test scores. We do encourage you to apply early action. Our early action program is non-binding. So please apply by November 15th and you'll hear back at the very latest January 15th. If you're interested in our theater or music schools, they have completely separate application processes. So I recommend you check out their FAQ website. Thank you all so much and feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Thank you. Next, you'll be hearing from Butler University. All right. Great. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Tim C. I would be your admission counselor for Butler University, which is a uh, small to mid-sized private liberal arts school just about five miles or 15 minutes north of downtown Indianapolis, which you can see uh, in the distance there. I mentioned we're small to mid-size, we're officially listed as mid-size, but we're certainly on the smaller end of that mid-size spectrum, so roughly 4,500 students. Um, we are predominantly an undergraduate school. Uh, you find maybe another 500 grad students in a given year, but again, that, the, the majority of the makeup of our campus is going to be undergraduate, and the majority of those students are also coming from out of state, um, so typically about 60% of our students are coming from outside the state of Indiana. Uh, certainly can expect to see uh, a smaller classroom experience at Butler. You can see the numbers on the screen there. Uh, we really don't have any larger, any big lecture halls. We don't have any TAs either. Um, so you certainly can expect to, to know your professors, have them know you. Um, and for three years in a row, we've, we've earned that number one ranking uh, amongst regional Midwest universities, uh, according to US News and World Report, not according to me, but you know, who am I to tell, tell them that they're wrong? Uh, okay, I don't have enough time to tell you about the different uh, major programs that we offer. I, I wish I could dive into those in a little bit more detail. We have about 70 majors in all, six, six academic colleges. Uh, but one thing that I can say that applies to every major that we offer is this emphasis on experiential learning. Um, we were founded in 1855 on the idea that experience is the best teacher. So woven into the curriculum for any of the majors you find on our campus is gonna be some kind of experiential learning opportunity. So internships certainly is, is a big part of that. Um, other things like undergraduate research, I mentioned we don't have a lot of uh, graduate students. So that's, those are opportunities reserved for undergrads, clinical rotations, studying abroad, uh, service work in, 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 the, um, in the city. Uh, anything to get you that kind of hands-on experience. Those are the things that Butler um, emphasizes. The, those are the kinds of things that the Butler does really, really well. Um, the last 10 years has been a really exciting period of growth for Butler, uh, both in terms of student population, but also just uh, physical structures on campus. Um, so I've got some of them listed here. Uh, our College of Education, our College of Business have, have moved into brand new facilities over the last couple of years. Uh, you see we have a new science complex under construction right now. So brand new lab space is coming um, next year. Um, so very soon. And then not even listed here, just in the last uh, less than 10 years, uh, two new dorms, um, a new performing arts building, new restaurants on campus, new apartments for, for juniors and seniors. It's just been this big, big period of growth for, for us. And it's been uh, really exciting. Um, this is the part of the presentation where my marketing office would be mad at me. Uh, I've, I've thrown out some of the slides they gave me, and I wanted to just show you some pictures of campus, because I feel like I don't have a lot of pictures of campus, and I think that part of what makes Butler special is this combination of a big campus, a big for a school of our population anyway, this big pretty campus, um, Division I athletics uh, in a major conference too, in the Big East Conference, uh, and then the proximity to the city, uh, those things make us feel, make Butler feel like a bigger school than it is. So it's small in the classroom, but campus life is big and school spirit is huge. If we feel like a school 10 times our size in that way, and speaking of school spirit, we have a cute mascot as well. So um, I know that's all anybody really wants to see uh, is, is a picture of a puppy. So, um, but yeah, it, it, those things make Butler feel bigger than it is. I, it, it, it's a really cool combination. Um, as far as living on campus goes, I think it's worth noting we require three years of on-campus housing. Uh, so it's definitely a residential campus, sort of a tight-knit 
uh, residential feel to campus. And because of all those new additions, we have all these modern uh, dorms. So pretty much everything we offer at this point is what we would call suite style. So you can see in this picture, the beds, uh, but also uh, a bathroom included in the unit. So this is one of our first year dorms. Uh, this is one of our sophomore dorms. Um, but again, things are, are suite style, more, more modern looking. Um, what I want to use the, uh, the rest of my time for is some, some quick notes about the application process. So we do ask that students um, uh, uh, apply directly into a major. We review you for admission directly into your intended major. Um, the only college that does not operate that way is the Jordan College of the Arts. You do have to audition for those programs, but everything else is, is direct entry into your program. These are safe ranges, both for admission and for scholarships in terms of GPA and test scores. Um, about the application, we are on the Common App. There is no application fee. Uh, we are test optional. Uh, we do super score if you want to uh, submit your test scores. Um, and I do wanna say we're test optional both for admission and for scholarships as well. Uh, so, so you still can be considered for all the same scholarships that we have to offer, even if you don't submit test scores. Um, and then as far as key dates are concerned, uh, fairly standard here as well, November 1st for early action. Uh, and we, we operate on an early action deadline, not early decision. So, so again, like you've heard already, non-binding. And then with whatever seconds I have left, I'll just try to uh, leave this up on the screen and talk for a little bit. But thanks so much for, for coming to join us this evening. And uh, feel free to contact me if you have any questions about Butler. Thanks so much. Thank you. Next, you'll be hearing from Elon University. Hello, everybody. I'm going to share with you. Hopefully you're seeing my screen. Um, so good afternoon. My name is Meredith Smith. I'm Assistant Dean of Admissions at Elon University, which is in North Carolina. And I am thrilled that you all are here. So um, take note of my contact information. I'm the one that works with all the students out west. And I'd be happy to talk to you um, about the application process or if you're able to come and visit campus, then I would love to say hi and meet you while you're here. So a little bit more about where we are and kind of what we're all about. It's not letting me click, there you go. Okay, great. So again, we're in North Carolina and just to kind of describe where we are in the state, we're in this awesome sweet spot. It's right in the middle. You've got the beach and the mountains, both less than three hours away. You've got Greensboro and Raleigh-Durham, which are both less than an hour away. So those are like our two major cities, which have the, the large airports for us. And most of our students easily fly into Raleigh-Durham, um, direct flights easily from Denver. Uh, and when we have you here on campus, you're here with about 6,300 under, 6, undergraduate students. Now, most of those students come from outside of North Carolina, which is really unique for our, for our population in that majority of our students are out of state. And that makes for a very residential community-based environment that thrives off of just everything that's constantly happening on campus. Um, of course, you can easily go for a hike or go to the beach, but in reality, a lot of our students are spending most of their time here on campus engaging in all the different activities and programs that we have to offer. Now, speaking of those programs and activities, there are plenty of them to choose from. And certainly if you don't see something that you'd like, then we would encourage you to start something new. Um, and so there's almost like 300 for you to choose from. And we love when students come in, you know, having participated in stuff, but really are inspired by the unique opportunity to join things that they've never heard of before and really open their eyes. We're also division one in the CAA conference, which competes from Charleston all the way up to Maine. Um, so right all along that I-95 corridor, which is nice for students to easily go to and from our, our away games and also our alumni and our family, um, kind of tribe are all throughout that corridor, which is a really great way for us to support our, our teams during the uh, out, of, out of state programming. So back on campus, you're gonna be in this really great environment where you're gonna be at a medium sized college, but in a small size classroom. And I think a lot of our students enjoy that a lot because they don't know everybody, but at the same time know their peers in class and, can know who to go to and turn to when they have questions or need help. 
uh, because all of our classes are taught by those professors. So no graduate assistants or TAs teach, it's just the students um, and the faculty that are sitting there together working either one-on-one -on -one if they have questions or kind of going in and participating in those groups and organizations I mentioned. And those faculty members are, are your advisors or the, the assistants for the organizations. And so there's a lot of collaboration and coordination between students, faculty, staff, um, and that just really is what Elon thrives on, that community-based culture. Now, all of your classes are gonna be housed in one of our four undergraduate schools. We have a, a school of business, communications, education, and a college of arts and sciences. That's where all of our majors are. You, thankfully, don't have to know what you wanna to do today, tomorrow, or even in the first year or two at Elon. Um, we are a liberal arts university, so we love when you come in undecided, because who isn't undecided <laughs> uh, about something? So come in undecided, declare by the end of your sophomore year, ideally, because we'd love to get you out of here in four years, just like I'm sure your parents would. Um, and that's really what helps us to get you started on the track and, and really ready to go. Um, and so lots of majors to choose from where students are double majoring, adding on a minor or two, figuring out as they go, switching majors whenever they're ready. Um, but we love when students really take that opportunity to explore. You're also gonna explore in your neighborhoods. We have eight different neighborhoods on campus, five of which are, are mainly uh, first year students and first year and second year students are required to live on campus. So there's lots of ways to dive in. Speaking of diving in, all of our students are actually required to complete two of our five Elon experiences before they graduate. So those are study abroad, internship, leadership, research, and service. Um, experiential learning is something that Elon is very well known for with, geez, like almost 83%, I think it is right there, uh, having studied abroad at least once. Many go abroad two or three times before they graduate because we have winter term. So we have a fall semester and a spring semester, just like most schools. But then the month of January for us is our winter term. One class, one month on campus, off campus, internship, study abroad. It's a really great thing. Kind of breaks up the whole year, but lets you do something different. And many students choose to study abroad during that time. Um, study abroad, any continent, except for Antarctica, I'm pretty sure is, is the, the only place we don't have anything, but we love when our students get out there. Internships, almost 90% have an internship. So we are here to help. We'll figure it out with you, alongside of you. Groups, organizations, plenty of leadership opportunities, research embedded everywhere on campus, not just in the sciences like most people think, and not even a part of your major. You can just do it because you want to. Um, and then of course, lots of service, whether it's a class, a program, a trip, many, many ways to get all of those Elon experiences. Now, other things to think about, our application process. We are on the Common App and our website. As you can see, we're test optional and we'll remain that way. And only time that you have to think ahead as to what major you might want to do would be if you're interested in engineering, nursing, our business dual, dual degree program, or any of our BFA programs. So thank you so much. It's been great talking with you all. And if you have questions, please let me know. Thank you. Next, you'll be hearing from Villanova University. Good evening, everyone. Okay, I'd like to continue just sharing the old screen here for a second. There we go. Um, all right, good evening, everyone. My name is Ali Smith. I'm one of the assistant directors of admission here at Villanova University, and I am not your West Coast representative. Um, so I work with our students from the South, but I will put Patrick's information in the chat. So if you have questions, Following up, you can either get in touch with me or get in touch with Patrick if you have something that's more related to, um, you know, West Coast happenings, Rocky Mountain happenings. So I'll take you on a little bit of a tour through uh, Villanova. I am a Villanova graduate, um, so really thrilled to be here this evening with you all. Uh, we were founded in 1842 to educate the children of local Irish immigrants who were largely lacking in educational opportunities at the time. It's very near and dear to our heart. Uh, Villanova is the only Augustinian Catholic university in the nation uh, that said, about 65% of our students are Catholic. You do not have to be Catholic to come to Villanova. We offer resources for students of all faiths or you know, not practicing any religion at all. So uh, you do not have to be Catholic to come here. We value a really personalized experience where teachers and students are partners in learning and scholarly inquiry. Villanovans are intellectually inspired, morally grounded, and globally minded. 
As you can see here, we are located in the suburbs of Philadelphia, America's birthplace, um, sixth largest city in the United States, about 12 miles west. Um, so you can see the skyline in the background of that little picture. We have two campus trains that can get you downtown in about 20 to 25 minutes. No transfers makes it really easy for you know, students to get downtown, experience campus life, but also have that city access that's really, really um, exciting. We have 6,500 undergraduates, making us firmly medium size um, with a feel that Goldilocks would be proud of. Not too big, not too small, uh, definitely right in the middle of all of it. We are uh, not only located in a great part of Pennsylvania, but a great part of the US. So we're about two hours from New York City, three hours from Washington DC, 90 minutes from the beach. So you are in the heart of the action, whether that's for the four years that you're with us on campus or whether that's you know even beyond. So I mentioned we are an Augustinian University, so we have our three founding principles of Veritas, Unitas, and Caritas. If you are not a Latin scholar, do not panic. I will translate for you. Uh, that means truth, unity, and love. That's really the foundation for who we were, who we are, and who we hope to continue to be. So that's thinking critically, acting compassionately, and succeeding while serving others. So to know Villanova is to know those three things about us. But um, inevitably, someone's going to ask you what you learned in your six minutes with me, and I hope you take away uh, these five things. One, Villanova is academically excellent. Number two, we're going to offer you personal attention. Number three, we have a really strong sense of community. Four, we have a passion for service. And five, we're going to set you up for lifelong success. And I'll kind of briefly touch on each of those. So that academically excellent piece, that's that nuts and bolts of what it means to come, come to college. So we have our 80 plus majors and minors housed within our four different academic colleges, arts and sciences, business, engineering, and nursing. So it is a liberal arts-based education through and through. Um, so if you're applying into arts, arts exploratory, you are not picking your major right away. You have until the end of your sophomore year to kind of try some stuff on, uh, take a couple bites of different things before you select your major. Um, business is pretty similar. You are applying directly into the business school, but you don't have to pick your major right away. Sciences, you have a couple options. You can either go in sciences exploratory, try some things out before you select your science, or you can apply directly into your major like a bio or a chem or a cognitive behavioral neuroscience, you name it. Nursing, a little bit more specific because the only major is nursing. So if you're applying to our nursing school, you are a nursing major, but it's a direct admit program. You're getting started on those classes right away. And then lastly is the College of Engineering. Uh, like nursing, you're applying directly into your major, getting started on those classes right away, but you do have the option to pick a first and second choice. So say you like mechanical, but civil is pretty cool too. You can list a one and a two. Um, so personal intention, average class size is 20 to 25, 11 to one student to faculty ratio. There is no hiding. You are going to be raising your hand. You're going to be participating. We really do value a more collaborative classroom environment over a competitive classroom environment. Villanova is the kind of place where we want our students to do well. We want students to love learning, value learning, want to keep learning long after they graduate. We are not here to burn you out. We want you to uh, really embrace this opportunity to work with our professors most of them have the highest degree in their field. We do not have TAs teaching. So you're gonna get a lot of personal attention with those professors um, throughout your time on campus, even though we still have that kind of bigger school feel, it's got that smaller classroom size personal attention. So strong sense of community, number three for those of you keeping track at home. So we have over 260 clubs and organizations. Uh, the joke on campus is there's no one cookie cutter type of Villanova and um, you know, it's not if you'll fit in, but how. So it really is something for everyone. We have a great orientation program that gets you off running right away. 96% freshman to sophomore retention rate. So people come to Villanova and stay at Villanova. A lot of school spirit. Um, shout out to my uh, friends from the Big East Conference, Butler and DePaul. Uh, we have 24 Division I sports within the Big East Conference. Um, basketball team, awesome. We're so proud of them. But our other sports are excellent as well. Um, lots of school spirit on campus. We also have club and intramural sports if you're not thinking division one, but it's great to be wrapped up in big school spirit with a small school feeling. And then we have a really big passion for service. So we are known for our service. We complete over 250,000 hours annually between a lot of our different experiences. One that I will highlight is our Special Olympics Fall Festival. We have the largest student run Special Olympics in the world. Um, the one time I will say Villanova is a competitive place on campus is when it comes to getting leadership positions within Special Olympics, but there is definitely a place for everyone there. So um, no worries at all about that. And then lastly, we're gonna set you up for lifelong success. So I mentioned that 96% freshman to sophomore retention rate. Our students come back after freshman year. 93% um, of our graduates participate in at least one internship. Um, and then we have a 92% successful placement rate within six months of graduation. So we get you out, get you on your way and onto bigger and better things after you spend your, your hopefully just four years with us. So thanks so much for chatting with me and I will drop Patrick and my own information in the chat.
Thank you. I just want to invite all of the rest to come back on and do a quick round of Q&A. Um, so in the same order that you presented in, um, just answer what advice you would give someone going through the college search process. Um, so the piece of advice I would share is um, be on the lookout for scholarships. There's um, a lot of scholarships to be had, both that are offered by the schools that you're looking at, but also there's other private scholarships online and often those don't get taken advantage of. So I would encourage students to go check those out. My advice would be to visit as many of those colleges as you can, especially the ones that you are really, really interested in. It makes a huge difference to actually be there walking around in person and getting a feel for what the environment is like. My piece of advice is to build a relationship with your admission counselors, especially the schools that you're most interested in. Don't hesitate to reach out. It's literally our job to be here and to be experts about our universities and to help walk you through this process. The admission process is not easy and it can be tough at times. So call on us. We're here to be your resources. I would say um, about visiting specifically, if you feel comfortable, ask questions, talk to the students, talk to your tour guides. Um, there's including admission counselors. There's nobody better to talk to than the students themselves. And even if you don't feel comfortable talking or, or, or asking questions, uh, observe student life. You know, are the students happy? Are they smiling? Are, is your tour guide talking to other students across campus? Uh, just, just try to get a feel for, um, uh, for student life while you're there. I would recommend that you all have awesome resources embedded in your local communities, whether it's through your high school, through a community-based organization, or through family and friends, and talk to them and figure out what it is they see in you and what it is that they might recommend that you look into at different universities. And then be sure to check out all different sizes. You'd be surprised at what you discover when you go to somewhere that's much smaller than your school or much bigger than your school. Um, there's a lot of lot to say for visiting and to seeing and feeling the campus, which is something that may not happen until after you're admitted. That's great. But definitely take advantage of any opportunity, whether it's close or far, any size would be a good size to look at just to get a feel. Um, these are all great answers. So uh, to not be redundant, I will say um, it's important to do your research on universities, but I think it's also really important to do research on yourself as well. I think it's really easy to come to a lot of these presentations and hear what people are saying is important, but I think it's really helpful to kind of do some self-reflection, figure out what's important to you, seek that information, as well as kind of taking in what everyone is telling you um, is super important. So um, helps with fit, helps with asking good questions when you're on campus um, doing those tours. So um, that's what I would say. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for joining us. Um, when you go to close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. And we'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other sessions recording at strivescan.com slash R-M-A-C-A-C. So thank you everyone. Have a good rest of your evening. Bye.